Ohio State 42, Michigan 41. Mark Rogers TV just minutes after the two teams left the field following that failed two-point conversion attempt by Michigan after what looked to be the tying score against the Buckeyes. Ohio State's 24-game winning streak intact just barely. Where do we start? Well, we start at the end. Tyvis Powell, the freshman defensive back for Ohio State, made the play of the game intercepting the pass from Devin Gardner on the two-point conversion. Michigan stacked up their three best receivers, Dilio Gallon and Funches, in a stacked formation to the right side. They had successfully run that formation and a number of patterns and plays out of that formation a number of times, but Ohio State, taking the time out, looking at the formation, uh, was able to defend it. And again, a freshman, Tyvis Powell, saves the day for the Buckeyes with the interception, 42-41. Uh, what stands out in this football game is both good and bad for both teams. There's a number of things here. Carlos Hyde, Urban Meyer said it after the game, may be the best back in the nation. There are other guys who are more elusive. They're faster. Uh, there may not be another back who's tougher, more hard-nosed, more physical with the combination of pretty good speed. Uh, Carlos Hyde ran 27 times for an Ohio State record against Michigan 226 yards, and he scored the game winner in the fourth quarter uh, after fumbling the previous possession. And the reason he fumbled was because he was scrapping and fighting for yardage, and it looked like he converted a huge first down for Ohio State after Michigan had tied the game or had gotten close within a touchdown that Hyde had broken free and just ripped away from a number of guys. But he just, uh, on that second and third and fourth effort, fumbled the football, and Michigan recovered it turned it over to Devin Gardner, and Devin Gardner has had his detractor this season. Um, there was a guy here in this seat uh, after the Notre Dame game, and actually before the Big Ten season started, before the regular season started in 2013, who said Devin Gardner was the best quarterback in the Big Ten. Well, he's not the best quarterback in the Big Ten, but he showed today and he shows at times why he is pretty special when he's on his game and taking care of the football, not loose with the football. He did have one fumble that led to an Ohio State touchdown in the second half. But look at these numbers, 32 for 45, 451 yards passing, four touchdowns, hobbled on an ankle. But when he needed to be elusive, sometimes just in the pocket to, to buy himself some more time, the ankle held up, and he made some plays in the open field with his feet when he needed to. Devin Gardner was a monster today. Michigan ran it for 152 yards, and this is really um, a bad sign for the Buckeyes moving forward against Michigan State in a bowl game or a national championship game. 152 yards rushing for Michigan. This team has not run against any decent defense. Penn State... Michigan State, certainly. Nebraska, go on down the road. Fitz Toussaint came into this game averaging 3.4 yards per carry. In college football, that is completely atrocious. Derek Green at 3.1 yards per carry. Michigan has not run the football. They're 11th in the Big, 12, in the Big Ten out of the 12 teams in the Big Ten in rushing offense, but they ran it just enough against Ohio State. They were successful on the ground. And again, what's woeful for Ohio State here is the pass defense can't stop uh, a passing game. Um, and this is something that we pointed out uh, to a number of people this week um, on Twitter in particular, is that a number of people came into this game, certainly Buckeye fans uh, to a large extent, and a lot of uh, national media outlets and analysts looking for Ohio State to cruise and to roll in this game. Well, if you look at the rosters, Rich Rodriguez recruited pretty well. He recruited top 15 to top 20 talent. Brady Hoke has stepped it up into the top 5 to 10 range. The number of four and five star recruits on these two teams is pretty equal. The talent is pretty equal. The difference in these two teams this season has been Michigan's interior offensive line has been woeful. It's very young. They have the stud, Taylor Luan, at uh, left tackle. Everybody knows about him, but the interior blocking, woeful. And uh, they don't have anybody to match Carlos Hyde. Fitz Dusan is a nice back and with a better line would run for big yardage. But the interior line play for Michigan offensively has been bad. And uh, Devin Gardner has been very careless with the football. The, that's the biggest difference. Those two factors, the biggest difference between these two football games.
these two football teams this season with Ohio State coming in at 11-0 and Michigan at 7-4. Keep in mind, again, that uh, Michigan against a pretty good, what has turned out to be a pretty good Iowa team. Uh, if you track the scores and the results, Iowa is much better than a lot of people think. Uh, Michigan gained 158 yards last week at Iowa City against the Hawkeyes. They had over 200 yards in the first quarter against Ohio State, 600 total. Don't have the exact figure, but over 600 yards of total offense by Michigan against Ohio State. Again, they ran the ball just enough. Uh, if this was a Penn State running game or a Michigan State running game, 152 yards would not be alarming. But Michigan can't run it against anyone, and they ran it against the Buckeyes. Ohio State with individual talent on defense for some reason, a lot of breakdowns in the secondary, a lot of missed tackles, a lot of times that they make plays for two and three yard gains where the, the net result's decent, but they could attract somebody down for a three or four yard loss. Bradley Roby's one of the best in the business, although he's had an off season. Ryan Shazier is no question the defensive player of the year in the Big Ten. Noah Spence is an up and coming star as a sophomore defensive end. Uh, they've got a number of players, but they've lost leadership on that defense and they haven't figured it out through 12 games. Uh, Wisconsin threw the ball on them. There are a number of teams in the Big Ten and Cal out west in the non-conference game that have thrown against Ohio State. And we're not talking about great passing teams here. Now with Jeremy Gallon coming in with 71 receptions and Drew Dilio, a guy that we, we previewed in our post this week talking about where is Drew Dilio? He made some big plays in the passing game as well. Came in with just nine receptions. Devin Funches, the most talented big man, big tight end in the Big Ten, uh, dropped five passes against Iowa, dropped a couple uh, this week, uh, dropped what would have been a touchdown on a beautiful pass from Gardner in the fourth quarter, but he made some big catches, and he is extremely talented and set the Michigan tight end receiving record for yardage. Uh, would like to note that when Ohio State did start to play better defensively in the second and third quarters, it was it was out of the gate that they looked awful and then down the stretch they looked awful but those second and third quarters they played much better in that stretch and when they in which they outscored Michigan down 14-7 went up 35-21 so outscoring Michigan at that point what 21 nothing or uh, 21-7 28-7 is that uh, the pass rush they dialed up the pass rush and so it was no expense it was Ryan Shazier it was Joey Bosa, the freshman, who put the heat on Michigan. But again, alarming because Ohio State gets the huge touchdown drive and the game-winning, ultimately game-winning touchdown from Carlos Hyde. And the kickoff coverage was good for once uh, against Michigan on that final kickoff, pinning them down to the 14-yard line. But they, they, they stopped Michigan. They got a sack at one point. They got some pressure from Bosa. They got the sack to push them back at second and 17. But again, Michigan on a misdirection. And Al Borges is a capable offensive coordinator. He's got the track record. Um, he dialed up some great misdirection stuff. Came up with some, some great play calling in situational uh, football. And dialed up the misdirection uh, slip screen to Jeremy Gallon on the backside or to uh, Fitz Toussaint on the backside that set up the game winning or the game tying or what could have been the game tying touchdown uh, to the tight end when Devin Gardner uh, just had converted the fourth down and then threw the touchdown pass. Uh, anything else we want to hit on this one? Of course, uh, the big fight. Uh, the actions of Marcus Haller, despicable, disgusting, idiotic. He's obviously a very immature person, um, which is somewhat understandable at his age. Uh, we expect these guys to act like professionals, but in the heat of the moment, uh, that's not necessarily going to happen. He got thrown out of the game, and then even after being thrown out of the game, threw the helmet on the sideline, and then more so, you probably saw it on Twitter or on some social media out there that uh, he uh, threw up the double bird on the O or H sign coming out of uh, Michigan Stadium down through the tunnel. So he will be uh, dealt with uh, sternly, I would imagine, and most likely would miss uh, the first half of the Michigan State game. Uh, the rule that uh, was being clarified during the game was uh, because the infractions were in the first half of this game that uh, players would be lost for the first half of the Big Ten Championship game. Again, the, uh, the freshman came in, Pat Eflin, 
came in and filled in capably for Marcus Hall. The, the running game did not miss a beat in the running game for Ohio State's devastating between Braxton Miller and between Carlos Hyde. And Miller uh, passing the football wasn't his best day, but 6 for 15, 133, two touchdowns, one pick doesn't really um, add up his contribution. Of course, Braxton Miller needs to be accounted for. He did miss a few throws. Uh, one in particular in the first quarter, he made a poor decision. He was locked on Devin Smith all the way and threw into double coverage uh, on a third and nine uh, going deep down the sideline um, trying to trying to make the big play for the touchdown. Uh, Ohio State, uh, we will talk about it in the next few days, so we'll not prep the Michigan State Big Ten Championship matchup. Uh, Spartans winning over Minnesota today 14-3, to but the Buckeyes have a number of things to clean up on defense. Now, Michigan State's not necessarily the team that's going to take advantage, but on the flip side, Michigan State's not going to give up Big, big points to Ohio State, you wouldn't think. So Ohio State's defense is going to have to help out the offense uh, in this one coming up next Saturday. But for right now, um, Michigan played an extremely good game, a uh, very tough game. And again, they have the talent to almost match Ohio State, and that's very evident. Uh, this rivalry uh, should be a great one going forward as it has been in the past and took that little slump under the reign of Rich Rodriguez in Ann Arbor. Okay, Buckeyes win at 42-41. I completely understand the Buckeye bashing in regards to comparing uh, this performance and the performance for most of the season against Florida State and Alabama, two teams that have been dominant um, on defense, where Ohio State's been dominant on defense a couple times, but mostly very leaky on defense against decent teams, and the offense is dominant, one of the best in college football. It's just too bad that we have a system where we have to rate on style points because that's not the way sports is supposed to be played. All right, let's not take away from this one. It was a great one. Buckeyes 42, Wolverines 41. Would love to hear what you have to say right now on Mark Rogers TV.